Hey folks, so it's finally cool enough to actually hang out outside for more than about 10 minutes at a time for me. Um, I'm not a super big fan of the heat and that's made gardening this summer extra challenging. Um, while I'm celebrating that at the same time, um, it means that it's the end of the road for a plant that I've had in my front yard since we got this house. Um, I'm gonna show you what that looks like. But uh, the caveat here is don't get attached to it um, because today is the day that I'm gonna try to get rid of it and put something else in its place. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here is a lovely shrub that we inherited with the house when we bought it in 2019. Um, I had never seen this shrub before, so I had to look it up because I thought it was a holly. When in fact, because I mean, look at these leaves, they got that nice serrated edge, little points, kind of a waxy leaf. <laughs> Sorry, some uh, folks walking past talking about recipes, which was interesting, but not necessarily on topic for my video. Um, it's got a waxy leaf, kind of like a holly does, but it's a lot thinner. Um, and actually this isn't a holly at all. This is Mahonia. I can't remember what, so that's like the genus name. I can't remember the species name that I thought this was, was but um, I've also heard it referred to as Oregon grape. Um, and I actually did see some in Oregon um, when I was out in Portland for a conference. So it, maybe that makes sense, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's nice, it's vigorous. Um, I have pruned it back hard this year already to try to keep it from clearing. Like this is my front yard or my front porch right here, trying to get it from like obscuring our view of the street. Um, but it doesn't do a lot for me. Uh, it has these long gnarly canes underneath that don't look so great. It does, um, you can see in some of these leaves, it does get some nice autumn color, which, you know, that's a plus. Um, also in the spring, it uh, has these yellow, these really dense clusters of yellow flowers that smell really nice, um, that eventually lead to grapes, which in theory you can eat, but I don't. Uh, so like, those are things that are great about this plant. Also, it's extremely vigorous. Um, I've pruned it hard many, many seasons and it just comes back again and again. Um, but it's really not doing much for me. <laughs> and I think what I wanna replace it with well, I don't think, I know. My plan is to re replace this with a hydrangea because I think they're lovely and I've seen them do really well in other folks' yards on my street. So I know the, the, the environment's right. Um, but that means this guy's gotta go. Um, and it's gonna be a little feisty like a rose. It's got some pointy points. So I'm gonna put on my long gloves. My goal whenever I'm removing a shrub, which I haven't done that often, but I have done for there was actually a boxwood right here last year that I took out because it got boxwood blight. And that was definitely not something I wanted to keep around. Um, but my goal and my approach is gonna be to take off the branches first, um, work my way as far down to the main stem here at the bottom so that I can actually get a shovel around the root ball and take this guy out. Um, might take a little minute, but that's why I was waiting for it to get cooler uh, so that I, this hard work would be a little less hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All right, first tool of choice is gonna be my handy dandy uh, Fiskar pruners that I use for normal pruning because everything on the outer branches is gonna be pretty narrow and I can move pretty swiftly um, with my little clippy clippies. Chomp, chomp. Rest in power, Mahonia.
And at this point, you can probably start to see a little bit more of the structure we're trying to work through. Um, I've been clearing away all the tiny leaves, tiny branches, because they'd be scratchy. And it's just easier to go gradually for me than to try to be a badass and go straight for the root ball. Um, or if it were my family, we'd probably get out a chainsaw or two eventually for this kind of stuff. Um, and I don't have one. It doesn't quite suit the urban lifestyle, suburban lifestyle that well. But because these leaves are so scratchy, it does help me when I'm going to come in here with a saw, a handsaw, not to have all these little guys scratching at me. But again, I'm not trying to necessarily cut it all the way down to the ground before I dig it up. It's just, I want to get a clear sense of where the plant actually begins and ends. Um, so up until now, we've been working with the Fiskars, with the pruners, which I would, will do on the other side, but I figured it's easier for me to demonstrate in one place. Now, we're coming to my new toy, which is a uh, little razor tooth saw. Let's see, I should be able to unlock it. Rawr. This is gonna be point number two, super sharp edges. Um, I should be able to saw through, although this is the first time I'm sawing through, so this could be hilarious. Um, but just get a little more aggressive with the thicker stems here. Ooh. Oh yeah. And there we go. You can get a sense of how much thicker we're able to get with the handsaw. It's worth mentioning, I almost forgot, this is something that's really distinctive of Mahonia, is that it has this yellow, you know, flesh inside of the stem. It can help you identify it compared to some other plants. But it's easy to see that. Whew. And the coup de gras is uh, that there's another tree. There's a tree hanging out here. See, that is not a Mahonia. Ah, uh, <laughs> could be another mulberry. Uh, could be any kind of tree that decided to hang out. I know I've turned that one back before. And because it lives right. Again, because I cut all those tiny branches first, it makes getting through the thicker stems a lot easier.
keep in mind with all of these jobs that are labor intensive, my dad has a saying, I work real slow and I pay myself by the hour. Um, there's also a family saying that we have, which I'm still trying to get translated into Ukrainian or Polish, which is little by little, bit, or bit by bit gets the job done. Um, again, this is probably not the most efficient way to do this. And for sure, you could hire somebody to come do this for you who have the best tools and the best expertise. As long as you're not in a big rush. As long as you're willing to go a little bit by a little bit. It's just not so bad. It's admittedly pretty therapeutic. <sighs> Alright. So at this point, we can see the actual. Oh, I should probably. Let me clear something out here. What the? All right, so at this point, you can see the actual base of the shrub is a lot smaller than its real estate was with all those branches. Um, goal next is going to be to start working my shovel all the way around using these these lovely branches as my handles to start wiggling the actual plant out. Really rooted in. Right, I'm gonna turn this off for a moment so I can get all the way around. All right, and uh, <laughs> I don't know about five million passes with the um, shovel around the root ball of this guy, and then finally starting to kick it from one side to the other with my boot while taking my uh, handy um, razor tooth saw uh, um, to the roots finally got this thing free. Check out that lovely root ball. Yeah, I mean, oh, here's the deal. If this is the sort of plant that could come back from runners, um, from the roots that are probably at some point inevitably going to be left in the soil, eh, there's a risk this guy's going to come back, but I'll keep an eye out for it and I'll deal with it then. Um, I don't think it's as aggressive as like a daylily, for example. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, maybe if I was beefier in the muscle or had better tools, this would go faster or be more elegant. But I just also wanted to show you that, um, a weekend plant warrior like myself with not a lot of upper body strength, a recent amount of mass and a lot of patience can 
pull up an entire shrub and make room for something better. Um, I got a whole set of plants actually that I want to put in this space, including hydrangeas. Um, but I've had to wait till the right day to claim this victory. But still, rest in power, Mahonia. You're a beautiful plant, You've done amazing, but it's time for you to move on. Peace.